This is sort of a follow-up video to some of the previous videos I made talking about the Ursa Mini, specifically the Ursa Mini 4.6K. From here on out, I'm gonna refer to it as the Ursa Mini because that's easier than saying Ursa Mini 4.6K every single time, but I do prefer the 4.6K version as that's got the extra dynamic range and the extra resolution that I like to work with. And I think that's a little bit better than the regular Ursa Mini 4K, and I, I think it's probably worth it for that upgrade. Now. The Ursa Mini 4.6K. I've got it right here. I've used it on a bunch of shoots now. When I first did my review, I had used it a few times, really liked it, but there were some people who didn't quite understand the points I was making. I was pointing out some of the flaws, like there's no built-in ND filters or that the handling and the ergonomics aren't quite what you want. It's not the fastest to use camera. It's missing a few buttons that I might like. And just overall, there's, there's a couple small things that are missing and people rightfully pointed out that the red cameras don't have those features or are similar, have a touchscreen interface or that the airy cam cameras are similar because this is a cinema style camera. I'm gonna stop holding it up because it's, it, even though it's mini, it is still kind of big. So I've got one. Now, I love the Ursa Mini 4.6K because it's fantastic. The images are amazing, and for the price, it is really, really cheap. So there are a lot of people who wanna, want me to just praise the camera like 100% and don't point out any of the flaws. And you can find those videos on YouTube. There's a lot of people who've shot with this camera, who've done reviews, and they don't really point out anything negative or any drawbacks. And there really isn't anything negative. I, like I said, I love the camera. I love shooting with it. This is my like sixth time shooting with it just because I love it so much. It's so easy to work with and the footage looks phenomenal. But it would be, I think, a little unfair of me to not point out the hidden cost of having to buy all the upgrades, right? Like this doesn't come this way. You've got to buy this viewfinder attachment. You've got to buy the shoulder kit. You've got to buy, you know, all this extra stuff that you got to buy. You got to buy the CFast cards. You've got to buy, you know, ND filters, and you definitely need to buy a, uh, a IR cut filter, basically cutting out the infrared light. I talked about that a little bit in my review. But basically, this camera is really susceptible to infrared pollution, so you need an IR cut filter, and that's like 100 bucks there. So there's all these little add-ons. That's kind of a downside. If you look at this camera, body only, for 5,000 and think, oh, for 5,000 and a few upgrades, I'm gonna have something amazing. Well, no, it's really more like a $10,000 camera package when everything is all said and done. Does that mean you have to spend $10,000 to shoot with it? No, but if you're gonna spend that kind of money on a camera like this, you probably want to. Because why would you want to spend $5,000, $6,000, dollars to have a camera that's kind of Frankenstein together with leftover parts? You, you kind of probably want something that's really good, but there still are ways to work with it. So there's people who really, really like the camera. I'm one of them, I love it. But I'm still gonna point out the things that could be better. That's how things get improved, right? If Blackmagic is gonna come out with an Ursa Mini 4.6K version two, or an Ursa Mini 6K or 8K, I want them to know my feedback and hopefully your feedback and let you know and let them know so that on the second iteration there can be some improvement or if you go out and buy this camera or rent it, you're aware of these minor drawbacks. I, I can't reiterate that enough. These are minor setbacks and there's really nothing else in the price point that can even compare with the Ursa Mini other than maybe the Sony FS5. But you, you're missing RAW, you're missing the high quality codec, it doesn't do quite as much. so. It is a little bit different, but it does have some nice additional features too. So just keep that in mind. You know, I'm, I'm trying to provide my honest feedback on cameras. I'm not trying to tear the Ursa Mini apart when I say, hey, it's got these, these problems, or even the Sony A7 cameras, you know, when I point out some of their flaws. I'm not saying that I hate them, I love them. I actually have, hold on. I've actually got an A7S right here because I needed the low light capabilities for this shoot and a couple shoots kind of all around. So I rented the A7S, the right tool for the right job. Same thing with the Ursa Mini. I needed that high quality, extra dynamic range, just really pristine visual quality. Maybe you don't always need that, maybe you always do need it. That's where you kind of, you buy, you rent, whatever. But I'm gonna point out problems with the cameras as I see them because hopefully that's how we can get better cameras. You know, I'm not saying that it sucks, just because I don't like the battery life on the A7S, which you can fix by putting it in airplane mode, by the way, or that the, the flip out screen only flips the one way and I can't flip it around like I can with my GH4. It's a minor complaint, still love the camera, it's great, but I wish it had a better screen. So that, that's kind of my philosophy on all this stuff. I wanna point out all the pros, 
but I'm also gonna be honest about the cons and tell you when something you, something you should, just should be aware of, you know? Be aware that the Ursa Mini doesn't have built-in ND filters. You have to know that. <laughs> it might be obvious, I don't know, you know, if you read the spec sheet, but not everyone does that. So I'm gonna point out the stuff that might set you back, and I'm gonna point out the stuff that's that's really good. And, and that's the stuff that's even less important. You know, me praising a camera, saying how amazing it is, that's what all their marketing videos do anyway, right? If you watch Sony's marketing videos, they're gonna tell you 4K, they're gonna tell you low light, but they're not gonna tell you, hey, the flip out screen only flips the one way or that the battery isn't as good as it should be. Or so many, same thing. They're not gonna point out the negatives, they're only gonna point out the positives. So I'm gonna do a little bit of both. Point out the positives, but also point out those negatives. Again, love the cameras, they're great. I would tell you if I hated them. If they were garbage, and well, I wouldn't be shooting with them, you know. But I'll tell you, I'll let you know. Pros, cons, honesty.